if I crank it all the way down clockwise to where it's tight, that spool won't spin. Each one of those is a powerful magnet. They don't generally have both. That's pretty cool when they do have both like this. We're just gonna see if it backlashes at all. Look at that. No backlash. So you got yourself your first bait caster. And maybe you're wondering, how the heck do you cast one of these things? What exactly is going on with this bait caster? Maybe you're a little intimidated as you learn about the dreaded backlash. They certainly do take a little bit of practice and a little getting used to. But once you master a bait caster, your game is gonna change altogether. Well, don't worry about that, guys. No matter how intimidating a bait cast can seem, I'm gonna break it all down for you. I'm gonna explain how it works, show you how to tune it, and show you how to cast it. Today, on Captain's Corner. <laughs> yeah, buddy! That's right, folks. Captain Mikey coming to you from beautiful North Florida on behalf of Casking. Today, I'm gonna go in the ins and outs of your first bait caster. I'm gonna explain to you why it works, how it works, how to fine tune your bait caster, and how to actually cast it without getting that dreaded backlash. Before I get to how to actually cast one of these things without having that nightmare of a backlash, let me break it down and show you what a bait caster is and how it actually works. By understanding how it actually works, Hopefully, you'll be able to figure out how to actually use it. That's right, a bait caster, right here. Sleek, slick, powerful, and pretty darn beautiful. First, let me start off by saying, I know the problems that you have, the fears that you've had, and the stumbling blocks that you've come across already dealing with bait casters. The dreaded backlash, the bird's nest. It's annoying, but it happens to all of us. Don't give up. There is definitely a learning curve to a bait caster. It takes some time, it takes some practice. I don't care what they say. No matter who you are or how long you've been using bait casters, we all still have those same issues. It happens. It's the nature of the beast. I'm gonna to try to teach you the reasons why that happens. And hopefully with that knowledge, you'll be able to learn how to help prevent it from happening on a regular basis. The best way to learn is to make a mistake. As long as you learn from that mistake and don't make it again. Otherwise, you didn't learn anything. But don't be afraid because you had a first bird's nest or a backlash. Don't let that intimidate you. Don't let that stop you from learning how to properly use a bait caster. Because once you master how to properly use a bait caster, you will take your fishing game to the very next level. This is a Cast King Spartacus. Yeah, it's pretty, it's gorgeous. I chose this one because it is a great example of everything that a bait caster is all about. It has several different braking mechanisms in it. So this reel can cover all the bases, no matter what reel you got. The first problem that everyone has with the bait caster is the fact that this is an open spool. Once you open the spool, you click on the, the release, that button, that spool is free to run, no matter what. Now, because that's just an open, free-flowing spool like that, it needs braking devices. And that's what a baitcaster has. It usually has several different braking devices. You come with one too. The most important of all braking devices is right there. That's your thumb. The different braking mechanisms on the reel, along with your own thumb, that's what makes a baitcaster work properly. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. The spool is here in the center. Over on this, this side, on the real side, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, they'll, they'll both be the same way. Along the handle is your drag. It's usually a star drag. You turn it clockwise to tighten it up, turn it counterclockwise to loosen it up. But right in front of that star drag system, right in front, right there, there's a little knob. That knob is on every single baitcaster out there. That is your spool tension control, or your tension control knob, your casting control knob. There's a whole bunch of different names, but that one is, it's the tension control knob. It turns right to left. If I crank it all the way down clockwise to where it's tight, that spool won't spin. It puts so much tension on the spool that it stops it from spinning altogether. As I back it down counterclockwise or back to the left, it's, you can feel it lessen the pressure and now the spool spins easier and easier each time. The tension control knob is what puts the pressure and tension on how fast that spool is allowed to spin from the get-go. If you have it too tight, the spool can't spin very fast. You have it too loose, nothing stops it and it'll spin very, very fast. That's the tension control knob. 
that's number one most important the other side of the reel there are many different reels so many of them will look different but they basically have the same ideas here there's three or four different braking mechanisms that can be in here there's magnetic braking systems there's centrifugal or centrifugal braking systems there's the pin braking systems there's a whole bunch of them here but all of them no matter which one you have your reel has it's located on the other side opposite of the handle what you're seeing on this one in particular this dial on the outside when you see that that's generally a magnetic braking system and that dial here is going to go from 1 to 10 1 to 8 1 to 9 something like that but the outside dial is generally a magnetic braking system your spool in the middle here is generally metal these brakes here control a series of magnets that push them closer or farther from that metallic spool magnets and metal they connect right so the closer those magnets are ie 10 the higher the higher the number the closer the magnets are of course you're going to have the magnetic force that slows that spool down doesn't allow it to spin as much because it's got the magnetic draw to it if you have it all the way down to one or even zero those magnets are as far away as they can be from the magnetic spool and it's going to allow it to spin much faster quite simple that way that's the magnetic braking system one being the magnets farthest away and less effective and 10 being the magnets closer and most effective. The other braking systems are generally located on the inside. This is usually a cover plate. There's gonna be a release of some sort. This On this particular reel, there's a little release here. Sometimes they got a button, something like that. By triggering that and spinning that down, we started to open up the side plate. And there is, now we have the reel open. I showed you the magnetic control on the outside, the one to 10. On the inside, there's your magnets see those silver dots there each one of those is a powerful magnet as i turn that dial those magnets go in or out closer to the metallic spool now this reel in particular this has a second braking system inside of it this is the centrifugal or centrifugal 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 i don't know how you call it it doesn't matter this is how it works there's another dial on it in there and this dial goes from zero to six and it even says it less to more and you can physically turn that left or right from zero, zero to six. Six being the most, zero being the least, of course. And it does the exact same thing as the magnets, except it's directly breaking on that spool. You got it set all the way down to zero. It's really not even do, having any kind of break on the spool at all. Put it all the way up to six. The more force and the more pressure those brakes have, the tighter they squeeze onto that spool, allowing it to spin even less. This is a fantastic reel of Spartacus because it's actually got two different braking systems. You don't normally see that. A lot of reels are most, either gonna have a centrifugal or centrifugal, or they're gonna have a magnetic. They don't generally have both. That's pretty cool when they do have both like this. Just give you ultimately much more control on that. That is basically how your reel operates. You release, release the button, opens the reel in the free spool. The tension control knob controls how fast the spool is allowed to spin in the beginning. Your braking systems well, those are exactly that, they're brakes. They control how fast the spool slows down. Once you cast it out, your lure loses that momentum or it hits into the water, the energy is lessens. You need to slow that spool down because it's still going as fast as you allowed it to go at the beginning. You need the brake systems to stop the spool from spinning. Makes perfect sense, does it not? Then the fourth and most important braking system is right there. Your thumb. Your thumb is the most important braking system on it. When you cast out that reel, your thumb should be right on top of that spool, just feathering that spool the entire time. And you have more control than anything. Any of these braking systems, they're set to a specific number, a specific tension, a specific magnetic force, whatever you set it at. But your thumb is adjustable. Think of it like the brakes of a car. If you just slam on the brakes of your car, it's gonna stop immediately. But you don't do that when you're coming up to a stop sign or a stop light or a car in front of you you slowly feather slowly apply more and more pressure until it stops that's exactly what you're doing with the thumb on the reel but we have all these backup braking systems to help aid you in that just in case you don't have some control at the moment wow. Now that you've got a good, better understanding of what all is built in to your bait casting reel there from the tension knobs to the braking systems on there to even your thumb it's all about spool speed control what happens when you get a backlash or a bird's nest is there is a difference in the speed of the spool to the speed of the line it's all about evening those two odds out right from the get-go from the tension control knob to the braking systems 
to the force in your cast to the feathering of your thumb. All about keeping those two at an even level. Making sure that that spool is spinning at the same speed that the line or the lure is traveling at. That's it. Lure goes too fast, spool goes too slow, backlash. Lure goes too slow, spool goes too fast, backlash. So now you got the understanding of how it works and why you're having the issue. Let me show you now how to actually fine tune it to how you're fishing to ensure that this doesn't happen in the first place. Keep in mind, this video is geared towards the beginners and the people just starting to learn how a bait caster works and how to actually operate a bait caster. There are gonna be a million different variances in every cast. How much wind is there? The weight of the lure, the force of the cast, how much energy you put into each cast is always gonna be different, as well as the resistance of the lures themselves. This has a lot going on. It's a big lure. It's gonna have a lot of drag and resistance in the air itself. And that's gonna be totally different than something, say, like a straight Senko with a bullet nose sinker that's gonna cut right through that air. There are always gonna be those variables on every cast. Every cast, every lure is going to be different. For your first bait caster and your first time setting up, set it up per lure. And that first steps first. Once you got your lure tied on, run it to the end of your rod. Bring it right up to the very tip of your rod, just like so. Number one. Go over to your braking control systems and you want to turn that knob all the way down to zero. Turn it completely off. My brakes are now off all the way down to zero. Number two, run over to your tension control knob. And what you're going to do is you're going to tighten that right down, release the reel, and as you see, my lure is still there. It hasn't dropped because I've got the tension control knob so tight that the spool isn't allowing it to spin. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna slowly back that tension control knob off until that lure starts pulling itself down. Click the button, the spool's not moving. Tension control knob right here. Slowly back it off, watch the spool. As I'm backing it off and loosening it, there it goes. The spool just spun. At that tension, just the weight of the lure is enough to spin that spool. What you wanna see here, you don't want that lure to fall fast. You want it to just slowly, steadily pull down. Just a slow, steady drop to the ground. Your tension control is perfectly set for just the weight of that lure. Next, you're gonna to wanna to deal with the magnetic brake controls on there. Now you're gonna to wanna to be able to stop it when it gets to the water. As a beginner and your first time, you're gonna to wanna to set that pretty high. Now you're not gonna be able to cast as far as you might like, but that's fine. It's all about control and precision anyway when it comes to bait casters. Set it high, 10, nine, eight, somewhere in that range. As you get better and more accomplished with things, you can slowly start backing that off and you'll be able to cast further and further, but still have that precision to control. Right now, it is not about distance. Right now, it is about control and not getting bird nests. A very, very good an easy way to judge whether this is done properly or not click on the release let the lure drop and when it hits that ground if you got no backlash here none of that line came around the spool stopped the brakes worked you should be able to cast this reel now at this setting without a backlash without even using your thumb we're just gonna see if it backlashes at all look at that no backlash as a beginner there's no easier way to adjust and fine tune your bait caster than that. Now, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna just show you guys an example. I hate bird's nests, I hate having to deal with them. I backed it all the way off to two. I backed my reel right off. It spins very fast. I'm gonna do that same cast without using my thumb again, and let's see if we get a bird's nest. This could get ugly. Oh! It didn't even get to the water, and I got a bird's nest. <sighs> That's pretty ugly. So now what I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna leave these settings, but I'm gonna show you how effective this break really is. I should be able to control that cast with just my thumb the whole time. Just like the brakes on a car, feathering it the whole time. Boom. No bird's nest. That's how effective your thumb is. And that is why the biggest lesson I can teach you about how to use a bait cast properly, practice, practice, practice. It's all in the thumb. You learn to the feel and the touch of that thumb, not only is that gonna help you diminish all the bird nests and problems you have, 
It's really gonna help you with your precision control and your precision casting when you're talking about things like pitching, flipping, and those finding those really tight little pockets that you gotta get your lure directly in. It's all in the thumb. Practice, practice, practice. Like I said, guys, there's gonna be a million different variables, no matter which way you do it. All these things are gonna be huge factors in how each individual cast is affected. Okay. But now that you know the basics, you're armed with the knowledge of how the bait caster operates, how you need to practice, and how it's really entirely up to you, all in total, you can get out there and have yourself a heck of a lot more fun than worrying about the intimidation of a bird's nest. And leave a comment on anything else you want to learn out here. I'll do my very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, guys, subscribe to the channel. From beautiful North Florida, no more backlashes. I'm Captain Mikey. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe we'll do a video on proper hook sets next time <laughs> on Captain's Corner.